אני מתכבד להזמין את מרק רוטנברג, Vice President of University Initiatives and Legal Affairs, Hillel International. מרק אוברסיז הילל קמפוס קליימט אינישיאטיב, working across the U.S. with Hillel professionals and higher education leaders to ensure a campus environment where every student can feel comfortable learning about and identifying with Judaism and Israel. Mark has spent most of his professional career on university campuses, serving many years as the general counsel at the University of Minnesota and John Hopkins University. Mr. Rotenberg. I want to thank my friends at Reut and um, uh, um, INSS and, and all of the people who put in a lot of work here gathering today for this very important conference. Um, as an attorney, I'm sensitive to precedent, so I don't know whether we should follow the precedent of the previous speaker or the, just simply the oral admonition about how long my, my talk will be here this afternoon, but we'll try to, we'll try to split the difference. Um, There's been a lot of talk already this afternoon and this morning about college campuses. And I think it's important for us to understand how Jewish students and students generally uh, on American college campuses are actually experiencing their lives. I'm a, a vice president of Hill International. Hill, as many of you know, is the overwhelmingly dominant organization on college campuses for Jewish students around the world. We're active on over 550 campuses. And so we have our finger on the pulse of what's actually going on with Jewish students and with other students across the United States, across North America and around the world. And I'll start off by saying that one of the most important ways to understand what is happening to Jewish students uh, today is uh, by analogy to Charles Dickens, it's the best of all worlds, it's the worst of all worlds. Uh, we have today on college campuses an unprecedented amount of Jewish activity. As, as Professor Dershowitz observed, there's lots of Jewish activism going on on college campuses in North America and around the world. Hillel has higher participation rates this year, this fall semester of 2022, than ever before. Hillel has taken more Jewish students to Israel in 2022 than ever before. There is more Jewish and Israel studies curricula and coursework on American campuses than ever before. And so on the one hand, we have a situation here in the United States, North America, and around the world where there is an unprecedented amount of Jewish engagement and Jewish participation on academic levels, on social levels, and with respect to Israel connectivity. It is also the case, it is also the case, that there has been over the past five or six years an unprecedented spike in anti-Semitism and attacks on Jewish students, some of which masquerades itself as being anti-Zionist and anti-Israel, and some of it does not. What I'm going to do here very briefly is um, speak a little bit about who are Jewish students so that everyone here can understand really what we're talking about. There are stereotypes about Jewish students which Jews share, and there are stereotypes about Jewish students with which anti-Semites share, right? And it's important for us to actually get some realism onto the table. The overwhelming majority of Jews of all ages in the United States, of all ages, take pride in their Jewishness and have very diverse understandings of their Jewish identity and their expressions. Jews in the United States express themselves as Jewish students do, as an ethno-religious community, many of them emphasizing one part of their Jewish identity and others another part. More than eight out of 10 Jews in the United States say they feel some, at least some sense of belonging to the Jewish people, and three quarters of US Jews say that being Jewish is either very or somewhat important to them. 90% of US Jews 
believe that anti-Semitism is a problem, and 82% believe that there has been an increase in experienced anti-Semitism in just the past five years. Well, what do Jewish students say about this? 43% of Jewish students on American college campuses, uh, according to a Hillel ADL survey last year, say they have personally witnessed or experienced anti-Semitism. On the other hand, it's important to keep in mind that two-thirds of Jewish students on American campuses believe their campus is welcoming and supportive of their Jewish identity. 41% of Jewish students have no idea how to report an anti-Semitic incident. Why is that important? Because the statistics on anti-Semitism incidents on American college campuses are therefore dr dramatically underrepresentative of the reality of the situation. In 2013, Hillel didn't even keep track of anti-Semitic incidents on college campuses. Last year, there were over 235 incidents of, of anti-Semitism on college campuses. And by the way, and there may be some disagreement in this room about this, Hillel International does not assume that every anti-Israel protest is anti-Semitism, right? If someone gets up and gives a speech about Israel and is very hostile, we don't assume that that's anti-Semitism. The dramatic growth in anti-Semitism on U.S. college campuses is defined by Hillel International to mean direct attacks on the Jewish identities and on the Jewish people that comprise the university community. This chart simply shows the dramatic spike in anti-Semitism, the rise in anti-Semitism on college campuses. The right-hand uh, chart shows the close correlation between anti-Semitic incidents on U.S. campuses and anti-Israel uh, demonstrations and, and, and activities. How do students experience anti-Semitism? Well, I'm not going to go through this uh, and, and quote out all of these uh, quotations here because of the admonition to stay on time. But sufficient, uh, suffice it to say that here you have, and we can uh, provide this to you later on if you wish, a whole host of, how, uh, of examples of how students actually experience anti-Semitism. They experience anti-Semitic attacks as Jews being dishonest, as Jews being greedy, as Jews being clannish, as Jews being powerful and control of money and, and banking. And, and of course, the, the, the most gross ma manifestations of anti-Semitism, uh, the, the, the depiction of swastikas. These are just uh, additional examples here of, of, of anti-Semitic tropes. Uh, I just want to quote out one because it's particularly apt in this context. On the left-hand side, you'll see a recent statement uh, by a Jewish student. People I know are going after me just for being Jewish, accusing me of killing Palestinian babies or wanting Israel for the oil. I have literally never said anything about Israel to them. They just assume that since I'm Jewish, I must support the Gaza campaign, okay? This is an illustration, right, of how anti-Semitism, pure and simple, right, an attack on a Jewish student gets conflated with perceptions by others on campus about Zionism. There are a number of, of examples. Some of them have already been discussed here this morning. I'll just briefly uh, uh, mention a, a few of them here. Um, on the left-hand side is the, the seal of, of the University of California. Uh, the University of California Berkeley Law School, as Professor Dershowitz mentioned, recently had 14 Jewish, uh, excuse me, 14 student-recognized student organizations, RSOs, amend their bylaws to bar Zionist speakers, right? Whatever you might think about this being an attack on Israel 
or on the uh, security and peoplehood in Israel. The majority of students at the University of California Berkeley Law School experience that as an attack on them, whether they identify as Zionist or not, right? Because in that community, right, most of those law students don't walk, or most of the, the, the Jewish law students don't walk around and assume themselves to be Zionists, right? They assume themselves to be Jewish, right? And the problem is when they are told that they can't be part of a Jewish, uh, of, of a registered student organization like women at Berkeley Law, they experience that as exclusion. Let me conclude with uh, 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 a brief summary of what's actually working, okay? Because it's important not to just be gloom and doom here. What's working? Well, number one, we have engagement by university administrators for the first time in the history of American higher education that is unprecedented. Hillel International has a campus climate project that engages now over 40 universities across the, the United States who are engaged in a 16-month-long exercise at understanding the campus climate for Jewish students. We have heightened interest by Jewish students in their capacity to stand up for themselves and speak out against marginalization and bullying. We have legal and governmental steps that the Jewish community is taking and that my colleague Elisa Lewin will be speaking about in a few minutes that are key to the empowerment of Jewish students in the United States. And finally, we have unprecedented amounts of media uh, 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 and community awareness at the highest levels of the United States government and the media who are bringing attention to the crisis in the spike of anti-Semitism in the United States. These are hopeful things that we can all build on, and I look forward to talking with you about them later this afternoon. Thank you.